Hey all you with AgriSpray Drones. Today is terrain following demo day on the EA Vision J150. We put this in a lot of situations where we had high degrees of slope, at high speeds, at high payloads, and it's always impressed us. And it's hard to really get that on camera. So we're at a field here where we have grass back terraces. If there's a grass back terrace, you know it's a high slope field. So we're gonna show you a few different scenarios here uh, with J150 spraying these grass back terraces. Let's get to it. All right, here's the first field here. Uh, it starts at the top of this hill over here, goes to the top of that hill, big valley and grass back terraces in between. We're running this two gallons per acre, 45 feet per second, 12 feet over the canopy. We have our entering and exit set to ascend only, meaning the drone will enter and exit the field but without going down, maintaining a minimum height of 15 feet, uh, which is really nice for fields like this. 32 foot route spacing, we're good to go. It's going to load everything to the drone, swipe right, and it takes over from there. This is pretty much a full load in the drone. Uh, we have, it says 19 gallons, uh, whenever we were on the ground, about 19.2, uh, but we had a little bit over that. Seems like our scale when we get about 19 gallons, uh, or about 19 and a half gallons reads a bit low. It's so about 19 and a half actual gallons in the tank right now, which is pretty much a full load. Now we'll see if it'll spray it all off because we're just going at a two gallon rate. This is a pretty short run field here with a lot of slope to it. So obviously there's some challenges here. Now running a big drone, on small fields is not has not usually been a great idea the j150 does seem to be changing a lot of that especially with the terrain following so there you can see it's maintaining a minimum height of about 10 feet we can watch our height there on the bottom right hand corner of my screen uh, maximum height there gets up to about 18 feet as it goes down that hill that's at 45 feet per second it's maintaining that speed going down the hill and then back up i'll pull up my camera so you guys can see that so here coming back up over here on this side, there's a steep grass back terrace and watch how the drone does slow down if it needs to, as it comes into not just a corner, but obviously into that grass back terrace. On the bottom of our screen, we've got two things here. We've got two different radar readouts or LIDAR readouts. So our horizontal uh, radar and LIDAR is right there. That shows us the path in front of the drone. Um, and then any obstacles around the drone. And then our vertical obstacle is right next to that. That shows us the path uh, that the drone is going to take in front of it. So it shows us right now the drone is planning that path up the hill. And then right here it's planning that path down the other side of the hill. And you can watch that radar pick up those grass back terraces as obstacles uh, right there to the right of the drone. So they're so steep, it's picking them up as an actual obstacle. And there we're, we're reading through the terrain right now. So it's actually reading through the ground. Uh, so we lose a bit of our, our video feed as it goes and crests the top of that hill and then back down the other side. There we go. Looks like we're still maximum of about 16 feet on that run as it goes down that high slope and back to the other side. So what's it using to keep its terrain? What's it using um, to detect the terrain, detect the obstacles? The J150 has three active radar arrays. It has one radar on the back of the drone that does downward and rearward obstacle detection. Then it has a radar on the front on the nose of the drone that does forward, side, and then it's radar on top of the drone that does upward. So those are your three radar arrays. And then it combines that with the LIDAR on the front of the drone. This is an automotive grade uh, tempered glass screen uh, LIDAR on the front of this drone. So the same company that makes the LIDAR for the 150 actually makes LIDARs for self-driving cars. So this is not a survey grade LIDAR. Uh, this is an automotive grade LIDAR made for autonomy and made for self-driving and made for AI path planning. So the same technology is going into self-driving cars that 
go 70 miles per hour down the freeway looking for obstacles and cars and pedestrians around them is the same technology inside of the J150, uh, which is one of the main reasons it has superior terrain following and obstacle detection and AI path planning. We don't see that stutter stepping, um, that pausing so much, but it has to slow down at will, but it's a very, very smooth transition as it plans that path down the hill, just like this, across the valley and back up the other side. You know, big drones for small fields like this, for high slopes like this, we never thought were really, uh, you know, possible or something that, that you should actually use for this kind of a job uh, because these fields are much more challenging. Um, usually it requires much more operator control. Remember back with the T40 days, we used to have to bump our left stick up just to get it to go up a hill without pausing. Well, the J150 terrain following obstacle avoidance solves that and the battery life on this drone is pretty incredible for the payload. So we've got six gallons left in the drone and 40% battery. Uh, and we're going back and forth on this. This might be about a thousand foot run here, uh, back and forth as it goes up and down the hill. So we should have enough to spray this tank completely out, if not get very, very close uh, before it triggers that low battery. And we can check our battery settings here. I've got it set to automatically return, basically be on the ground uh, within, you know, with 20, 25% battery is what that check mark means there. You can take that off and then it would definitely empty out the entire tank. So we can see it going down this hillside here. And again, maintaining that 12 foot is what the setting is, 12 foot high. So you can see as the tank gets a bit more empty, it's a bit easier for the drone to actually maintain uh, that altitude, but you saw it with a full tank and it didn't seem to have much of a problem either. There you can see that radar picking up that terrace in front of it as you know it kind of has to determine is that is that thing in front of me is that terrace in front of me an obstacle or is that part of the terrain and that's one thing we have to do for high slope fields like this if you want to maintain that high speed is in your perception settings you have to turn off intelligent bypassing that way it recognizes uh, things in front of it as part of the terrain not necessarily as an obstacle so here we see we're dipping below our our 30 percent battery only have about a gallon and a half left. So we'll see if it determines to come home at low battery or at low payload. That was a really steep terrace there. That was awesome. Yep, so there we go. We're gonna get the entire tank sprayed out. Spray system empty. Now it's coming home. So it's gonna return home automatically as our setting and it's gonna be in a send only mode. So we can just exit out of the screen here and it's gonna maintain a minimum height or try to maintain a minimum height of about 15 feet. So it's gonna climb this hill, but as it crests this hill, it's actually not gonna go back down uh, the valley in between us. It's gonna maintain uh, a level flight, so it's not wasting battery. There you can see our height's now 28 feet. So it's minimum 15, but it can go as high as it needs to to maintain that altitude. I'll just take our manual control, get it out a little bit here. This is a manual landing. And all you have to do there in the manual landing is just use the sticks. You don't have to press any buttons or anything like that. Just use the sticks to take over control. That's it. Uh, you guys just saw J150 spray out uh, about 19 and a half gallons on a very steep slope here uh, with a 32 foot route spacing. Now that's pretty key here. Remember, we've, we've shown we can go up to 34, six, even 40 feet in certain conditions and scenarios. Uh, so 30 foot route spacing is plenty to get adequate coverage, spraying out a full tank, high sloped field. This is gonna change a lot of things in the drone market. We're gonna keep running this and show you guys a few different, some more scenarios of uh, some terrain following on the drone 50.